I would encourage us to do what Vermont has always done and be sensible, but be open to folks who are suffering. Uh, the Refugee Settlement Program in America has a good track record. We root out folks who should not be accepted. The small town of, uh, town of Rutland, Vermont, planning to accept 100 refugees from Syria and Iraq over the next year, with the first expected to come this month. Mayor Christopher Loras alleging that resettling refugees is not just a moral obligation, but also an economic one, basically to diversity, to the economy. The trouble is, though, these decisions were made in secret, and that's according to new documents, new Freedom of Information Act documents obtained by Judicial Watch. Joining me now is Dr. Timothy Cook. He is a retired Army Reserve Colonel. He's lived in Rutland his entire life, and Dr. Cook started a group called Rutland First. He wants to reverse this decision. He joins me now. Good to have you, doctor. Thank you very much for having me. So what, is, what are your concerns about this move to resettle refugees there? Well, the problem is, is that there's a couple of questions you have to ask. Why is it that this process was kept in secret? That's one. And the other is, why was Rutland passed over not just once, but twice uh, for consideration? For consideration uh, for what? For the refugee resettlement program. The refugee resettlement program passed over our city twice. Now, the short answer to each is the first, the short answer to the first is because I think Mayor Lewis understood that this was going to be uh, roundly unaccepted by the population of Rutland. And, and he's trying to make this a moral equation. And I can understand why he would do that, except this is not an equation of, of, of morality for us. This is mathematics. Uh, this is the simple. Uh, uh, you know, arithmetic, arithmetic of whether or not we can afford to have this program. Can you afford it? Can uh, Rutland afford it? Well, let's look at some demographics. Uh, Rutland, Vermont, uh, the most telling thing is that 33 percent of average income for Rutland, Vermont, it comes from public welfare. 33 percent. That's double the state average. That's double the national average. Uh, Rutland, Vermont's uh, welfare is about five points above Vermont average, five points above national average. Rutland, Vermont's average household median income is about 25 percent less than the rest of the state, less than the rest of the country, and the list just goes on. on. Our median uh, uh, house values are about 50 percent of what they should be. Are you worried and, about security um, issues as well? Not at all. That was never a concern of mine. Um, you know, this could be a 100 uh, Quebecois coming from uh, Montreal uh, who don't speak English and who are going to ultimately require um, uh, city funding to support them, which is what's going to happen. There's going to be federal money, but the federal money is only going to last a few months for most of the programs. The rest of it is up to the Rutland uh, taxpaying citizen to foot the bill. So, Doctor, uh, why and, was and it so, kept so, secret? So, um, yeah, if I can ahead. just finish my point, sure. if, if we were going to bring those 100 people, uh, we, we still would think it's a bad idea. So it's not an anti-Syrian, anti-immigrant uh, process at all. It's about mathematics. Go ahead, ma'am. I'm so, sorry to interrupt you. Why was it kept secret then, the decision? Because I believe he understood that, that uh, most people would push back against this. And, and they wouldn't be pushing back against it for any other reasons than the practicality that our city has issues. Uh, we have economic issues, which I just addressed. We have a drug issue. If you were to Google Wall Street Journal heroin, Rutland, Vermont, it will take you to an article published about a month ago, a nationally publicized article uh, in Wall Street Journal detailing the heroin e epidemic in our city. It was because of the drug problem, because of the related crime problem, and because of the um, uh, economic desperation of the city. I mean, you don't even have to look at that. If you come to Rutland, I invite you, come to Rutland sometime. Start in the southern part of the city, go to the mall. The mall is a ghost town. You drive through the city. Every third business property is going to have a for lease or for sale um, sign on it. So I'm trying to understand, between all these other issues, uh, you can't rescue a person, okay? You can't throw them a lifeline if you have no lifeline to, to throw out to them. You can't rescue others until you have rescued yourself first. Doctor, and, um, yeah, go ahead. Let's finish your point there, sir. No, no, no. My, I mean, this is like, I mean, I love Chris Lors. Okay, we, we grew up together. Right. Okay, I don't get it on this point. Okay, we're lifelong friends. But 
uh, to me, this is like people in Rutland are drowning. And uh, the mayor is like a lifeguard. But instead of going in and drowning the citizens, he's looking along the beach to see who we can throw else into the riptide. It makes no sense to m many of us how you take a poor community, introduce even more poor people, uh, and somehow come out of that with an economic boom. The economic boom, such as it's going to be, is the influx of federal and state monies. Uh, but the people who are going to benefit from that are these vested interests who have been involved in this process from the beginning. Right. But that's not going to have the average rolling taxpayer. Right. And those vested interests get a lot and that's, of federal and that's not money. A, that's, not money. A, that's not an economic boom. That's an economic band-aid. Right. I hear If the last saying. eight years right. have shown us anything, okay. that doesn't work. All right. Dr. Timothy Cook, Rutland, Vermont re resident, thank you so much for your time, sir. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.